Hi everybody, it's Matt here, your local friendly neighbourhood vestibular with a migraine sufferer. Firstly, I apologise for the dishevelled look. I've not managed to get my hair cut yet. I am doing on Friday because lockdown measures have eased in the UK. So I just waited a couple of well, a couple of weeks before I actually got my hair cut. But this should be the last time I appear making a video looking a bit like a 70s porn star actor. And, I, I, and, and the glasses don't help, the shaded glasses. So got the FL41s on because so I've been watching TV and been on my computer a lot today. But... I think it does give me that kind of sort of 70s CD vibe. So that's why I'm going with the porn star. So some of you may have realised as well, the angle I'm filming at slightly changed. So I did a bit of decorating and sorting my flat out during the lockdown. So why not be flanked by the Dark Knight himself? And it has a great message for us as well, for all vestibular migraine sufferers. Remember, the night is darkest before the dawn. So the dawn is coming for all you guys who are suffering. So what's today's video about? Well, it's a fairly quick one and I thought it was worth just getting out there because it's really got me thinking in the last couple of days and it could be it could be a potential really good treatment to help us with vestibular migraine. So to give a bit of a, bit of a background, I was um, on Instagram yesterday, obviously posting posing photos of myself as, you know, I, I'm that vain. And I read a post by a, a lass, who, a girl who has got vestibular migraine and she... She was talking about basically a bit, a bit about how it was going with her treatment and how she's doing. And she was saying that she's been started on a medication. I can't remember its name, but it's a medication that's used to commonly used to lower your blood pressure. And I think it's I think it's called a, a, a anti hypersensitive drug. So it's also used to control, I think, some kind of behavior disorders as well. That was really interesting for me because as soon as I saw her saying blood pressure, it reminded me of what happened to me in my first ever episode of vestibular migraine, which struck about 10 years ago now. So I remember at the time, well, one of the times I was taken to hospital, they were doing tests on me and the nurse doing my blood pressure was like bamboozled and puzzled because he was saying, oh, your blood pressure is flying around everywhere. And he was he was actually it really unnerved me, actually. He wasn't very calming. Um, and, I, and I was thinking, shit, what the hell is wrong with me? But anyway... They never really got to the bottom of that. And I remember at the time they just concluded I must have had some weird virus that was impacting on my blood pressure and made, gave me all those what were actually were vestibular migraine symptoms. So anyway, so I didn't really think anything more of that um, until obviously last year when the chronic phase hit and I was ill for, as you all know, watching my channel, I was, I was ill for quite some time. So, but I didn't, I didn't really focus too much on the blood pressure side this time. And no one really talked about it, but in hindsight, it might explain why I nearly collapsed at the football match. If you know, if your blood pressure gets affected, you will feel faint naturally. So, anyway, where's this all going? So, yes, so blood pressure and blood pressure medication. So it's been used to treat this girl who I read about on Instagram. And actually, I then actually dawned on me that one of the meds I'm on, I'm on two. I'm on sertraline. And I'm on propranolol. So propranolol is actually used, as well as slowing that heartbeat down a little bit, it's also used to lower your blood pressure and control that a little bit more. So that made me feel really interested and it made me think, actually, I've been a bit hard on propanolol because I think I dissed it in an earlier video, but actually that drug might have been much more effective and much more crucial to my recovery than I first estimated. So in terms of what might be happening medically, as you know, I'm not a doctor, but from I, you'll have seen some of my other videos where I have made the case before that I think vestibular migraine has some impact on your central nervous system and I think I said in one of my videos I'll link it below which I talked about how my breathing went funny after having my second big spell of vestibular migraine and I'm now an asthmatic that I think that's a result of the central nervous system being disrupted by the vestibular episode explosion so think about it like this it's a bit like if you if you start throwing bricks at a hornet's nest it'll stir it all up, won't it? Everything will go crazy and the bees will be out and trying to sting you and they'll, you know what I mean? It all goes goes crazy. And I think that's what happens to the central nervous system when you get a vestibular incident or episode or illness. So I think that's what happened there. So this drug that, or a drug, so propanolol for me and this last is on a different one, but I can't really remember its name, but that's used then to treat that blood pressure side that's been stirred up by the vestibular episode. But it also, because it's kind of like a, uh, anti hypersensitivity sensitivity that's a hard word to say hypersensitivity drug it might be having that calming effect on the central nervous system which then of course 
may then reduce some of the symptoms that are generated by the vestibular migraine because actually what might be happening you may have the vestibular disturbance then that effect on here let's say that's the central nervous system and the central nervous system which are my fingers they're creating the different vestibular symptoms so that might be the breathing one that might be derealization that might be you know photophobia that one's the the mood and the anxiety as i've said before when you get a vestibular disturbance you pretty much always automatically get mood disturbance and you cannot help that check out my other video on that but it makes sense to me that you know perhaps some of those other symptoms that we just put down to vestibular migraine might actually be the vestibular disturbance affecting and a result of the effects on the central nervous system so that was really interesting for me I, I think it was a really interesting post she made so what i would recommend guys is maybe checking in with your gps your ents your vestibular experts your vestibular physio your um, neurologist to maybe say look is it worth me having a bit of a try on some kind of blood pressure or dehypersensation sensitive type drug which are commonly used to treat blood pressure maybe maybe that could be a crucial kind of component you're missing in your treatment that will really really impact and really start to make that difference to you uh, and to your recovery so as i said i'm i've been on that luckily for quite some time so that might be the kind of like it's like the michael j fox film the secret to my success maybe it was controlling that blood pressure and controlling that central nervous system disturbance so just the food for thought interesting theory i thought I think it said, it, said it, it kind of felt a bit like to me, like it started to ring a few bells and be a, maybe, you know, a bit of a missing, maybe a missing piece of the jigsaw that, that we're all maybe looking for. So I think you should all check that out with your doctors. So I'm not a doctor or, or a medic. So, you know, I'm only here to kind of like give you a bit of a steer to then seek the medical attention yourself. Um, because I can't diagnose you and won't diagnose you. So yeah, hope you find it interesting. So just to say, Keep a lookout because I'm about to give another interview on all things vestibular with the Chapinist man who uh, interviewed me last autumn. So it's going to be a bit of an update. I'll try and keep it lighthearted. Um, obviously, there's lots of positive news in there to talk about, and I'll share again some of my um, some of my tips to getting better. Explain a bit how I've been, so it'll be all kind of pulled together into a nice package. Um, and you know, w you know, with a bit of humour and a bit of banter and that kind of thing. So it'll only be about half an hour. So stick it on once it goes live. Stick it on in the background while you're making your tea or while you're um, I don't know, doing a bit of DIY or doing a bit of work or whatever. Because I know a lot of us are working from home at the moment. So worth maybe worth checking out. So not like I'm trying to sell anything or anything, but there you go. So I hope that's useful. Um, I hope you find that interesting. And I know, you know, perhaps you think, oh, blood pressure and blood pressure meds. That's something an old man might, I need to control me blood pressure. I can't get too excited. But who cares if we have to take medication that normally an older chap might take, if it's going to help and improve our vestibular migraine, we don't give a shit as long as it works. Like I don't give a shit about wearing these glasses at the moment as I'm doing this video because they are, I know they're mitigating the blue and green light. So it's limiting the chances that they'll stir up any any photophobia or any um, derealization. So I couldn't give a shit that I look like a slightly sinister 70s porn star. Anyway, guys, I've rambled on far too much. So remember, as you were, you'll be again. See you soon.